Crash, welcome to the project. It's great to have you in the country. You're, you're touring, playing lots of live shows at the moment. Can I ask, is it true that Aussie fans rock harder than anywhere else in the world? Is that true? They're pretty damn good. Yeah. <laughs> now, you've partied a lot, a lot in your life. I was reading today that you have a pacemaker. How does that work when you're up there on stage touring? <laughs> um, well... Uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it's it's it just uh, it's not really an issue. It was when I was still partying and and I had as a result of the alcohol poisoning they put yeah. that in as a safeguard, and uh, and I continued that for a couple of years. But I've been sober for about seven years now, so I haven't had any issues. So you don't party with a pacemaker. That's not a good idea. Is well, it? I mean, you can. You just have to. You have to really <laughs> adjust <laughs> no. it accordingly. <laughs> So no drinking now, no drugs completely well, clean? Yeah, I gave up everything. So does that make the creative process harder? No, I was I was never a victim to uh, that myth that in order to create, yeah. you have to be high all the time. Um, so fortunately for me, when I got clean, I actually became a lot more focused. And you know how you have one bad, bad habit turns into another one. When you give one up, you go on to something else. Fortunately, it just turned into more music for me. So I was lucky. Yeah, you have a legendary life, there's no doubt about that, but you've got kids now, which mm -hmm. is uh, exciting. Are they, are they big fans of rock? <laughs> they're, well, they're fans of music, I'll give them that, but they're not, they, they're sort of, they pick and choose what they like from what mom and dad listen to. Who are they loving at the moment? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they get a healthy diet of rough mixes for me, so at, at the present, they're, they know that album backwards and forwards. When will they be allowed to read your autobiography? I don't think, uh, well, I, I really honestly don't think they'll be interested, because when they get old enough to actually read it, they'll be like, we don't want to read about Dad, we live with him every day. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hear, alright. You've yeah, worked with some amazing people, including Michael Jackson, who's also a good friend. How is it working with him? What kind of guy was he? Michael, Michael's awesome. Um, I mean, to, in, simply put, he's just an amazing talent. Very sort of uh, unassuming in person, you know, and low-key and soft-spoken. But just, uh, you know, he's one of those people that once he gets on stage, he turns into what you imagine Michael Jackson to be. When he's not performing, he's very low-key. Do you change when you get on stage? Yeah. It's, a lot? I'm very different on stage than Aggressive? I am. Aggressive? Very. <laughs> 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 What's the biggest crowd you've ever played in front of? Um, Numbers. It's hard to say. I mean, about 120,000 people. 120,000? Oh, yeah. We had one gig, uh, I think it was in Argentina or something yep. like that. There was like 120 something thousand Just people. Just an intimate night. <laughs> <laughs> I love that you like maybe Argentina. If, if I ever played in the front of that many people, I would tattoo the location yeah. on my arm. Once, you know, if you get in front of 2,000 people, that's actually more unnerving than 120,000 people because that's right in their face. Uh, 120,000 people is a sea that you can't see past the first 10 rows. So it's a number that they tell you that we're there. You can't actually because see. Because you so actually playing, like playing in front of 30 right now must freak you out then. Yeah. Yeah. You don't actually don't like playing in front of small numbers, do you? I mean, if we said to you, here, grab out your guitar, you'd go, oh, no thanks. I actually like playing in small places because there's that interaction that's very toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with the yep. people that you're playing for um, so I like playing I like doing the variety you know playing with really small audiences and really big ones and mixing it up and you also love snakes don't you you love snakes yeah. we've got some footage which you played the other night we're gonna play again of you with Bob Irwin who yeah. you love you love Steve you love Bob now you you were um, hanging out with Bob he had that big snake around your neck but also, uh, I know you're friends with Bob, but he was asked how much of a fan he was. His answer was pretty interesting. Watch this. Bob, you're a Guns N' Roses fan. Now I am. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think, uh, you know, I think all of them. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I was standing there next to him going, that's a good safe answer. Now, I've seen a lot of interviews with you. A lot of people ask you about Axel Rose. They ask you about Guns N' Roses. I wanted to ask you something different. Um, I'm getting married in February. Any chance you'd play my wedding? <laughs> oh, I mean, I'm going to be on tour. <laughs> it's a pretty disappointing show. Uh, Sasha's album, Apocalyptic Love, is out now. And uh, according to the sticker, it has some moderate impact language, so you know it's going to be good rock and roll right there. <laughs> so it's also it says moderate impact. Moderate impact. I hadn't seen You've got to step it up. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he's also on tour. All the details on the website, Adelaide Perth. Still got a chance to see him. Would you please give it up for Slash?